Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So let us uh, continue to discuss about this radial uh, I mean free vortex design of the axial flow turbine blades and this is what we have been talking so far that these are the conditions and we have reached to this when looking at the angular momentum equation. Now if we move on since the radial equation is satisfied at 3. So, P and T varies across the radius and rho also varies across the radius. So, for a elementary mass what we can write rho 2 2 pi r dr v z 2 and we get m is 2 pi b z 2 r r 2 r t rho 2 r d r. Okay. So, one can see the variation of density is not straight forward hence uh, one has to go for some sort of a numerical methods or computational methods to find out uh, that uh, thing. So, now, as a good approximation, we can calculate this density at the mean radius and then we can estimate the other thing. So, let us say m dot equals to rho 2 m v z 2 a 2. Okay. So, that is at the mean radius that is what we can write. Now, we have v theta 2 r equals to r v z 2 tan alpha 2 which is constant. Okay. So, we get tan alpha 2 is constant by r v z 2 which is v theta r m by r v z 2 which is r m v z 2 tan alpha 2 m divided by r v z 2. So, that gives me r m by r at 2 tan alpha 2 m where alpha 2 m is the angle at mean radius r m. So, that is what you get and then you get tan beta 2 equals to tan alpha 2 minus u v z 2 tan alpha 3 equals to r m by r which is tan 3 m and we can write r m by r 2 tan alpha 2 m minus r by r m 2 m by v z 2. So, what we get tan beta 3 equals to r m by r 3 tan alpha 3 m plus r by r m 3 u m by v z 3. Okay. Now, once we look at the 3 d flows, since the blade velocity u is function of r, the velocity triangle changes from root to tip of the rotor, obvious reason. The flow properties also vary with r and the radial equilibrium condition has to be fulfilled which is 
1 by rho d p by d r equals to v theta square by r. So, this has to be satisfied. Now, we have already seen for axial compressor that uh, vortex flow equation uh, that um, d h naught by d r equals to v z d v z by d r plus v theta d v theta by d r plus v theta square by r. So, this is the equation vortex flow equation that we have seen. Since d p by d z is small, so the flow is assumed to be isentropic. Okay. Now, in free vortex design we had assumed that d h naught by d r would be 0 and d v z by d r would be 0. So, then for radial equation which will get v theta r equals to constant. Now, same is true for free vortex design of turbine. Okay. So, following the procedure which we have already adopted in the axial compressor, the this design method can be evolved for free vortex case of the turbine stage. Now, let us look at another design idea which is called constant nozzle angle design, constant nozzle angle design. So, this is another one that we can think about. The so, here the nozzle angle nozzle or straighter angle. So, the stator angle is constant or assumed to be constant. So, avoid having to manufacture nozzles of varying outlet angle. So, this is what we can do for the constant nozzle. Now, we consider this equation where d h naught by d r is v z d v z by d r plus same equation we are considering and then we will put back the now flow is between stator and rotor. Okay. Suism flow is also uniform across the annulus at inlet of the nozzle stator. So, that can give us an velocity triangle like this, which is uh, like this, this is u, w 2, v 2. So, we can go little bit further. So, v 2 So, this is beta 2, this is alpha 2, this is v z 2 and this component is uh, v theta 2. Okay. So, that is what this is u. Now, what happens at 2 d h naught by d r is 0. So, the flow is just done, there is no work done, no work done. So, the constant nozzle angle design which means alpha 2 is constant. So, what we can write is that v z 2 by v theta 2 which is 
spot alpha 2 which is constant. So, that is what we can write from the triangle that we have in there. Now, once we write that, that lead us to B z 2 by d r is with theta 2 by d r which is uh, into cot alpha 2. Now, from vortex flow equation, what we get? B z d v z by d r plus v theta d v theta by d r plus v theta square by r is 0. Now, that we will replace now v theta 2 cot alpha 2 into d v theta 2 by d r cot alpha 2 plus v theta 2 d v theta 2 by d r v theta 2 square by. So, we replace all this with the at station 2 that is v theta 2. So, this we can write 1 plus cot square alpha 2 d v theta 2 by d r plus v theta 2 by r 0. So, v theta 2 is not 0. So, that gives us d v theta 2 by v theta 2 um, equals to minus sin square alpha 2 d r by r. So, what we will get v theta 2 r sin square alpha 2 is constant. That means, v z 2 by cot alpha 2 into r sin square alpha 2 is constant. So, which will get you this important so, this is valid for normally for nozzle angle greater than 60 degree. Now, d v z by d r is not equals to 0 as in vortex design. Okay. So, this is what you get when you get these things. Now, having said that, we will move to the, the other thing is that, what are the possible losses in turbine stage. So, like compressor, we can also have some losses in uh, turbine stage. So, number one which one can think about is the profile loss. What is that? This profile loss is nothing but which is associated with the boundary layer growth over the blade profile. So, that is what we call it a sort of a profile loss. So, this is associated with the boundary layer and that is growing over the blade profile. So, this includes separation loss under adverse pressure gradient rather under adverse condition of extreme angles of incidence or high Mach number. Okay. So, 
that is one of these things that can possibly happen. Second is the annulus loss. What is that? This is again associated with the boundary layer growth on inner and outer walls of the annulus. So, this is what is termed as annulus loss. Third, there is secondary flow loss. So, this is from the secondary flow when a wall boundary layer is turned through an angle by an adjacent curved surface. So, that time we will have some loss which is due to this secondary flow and uh, known as secondary flow loss. Fourth one tip clearance loss. Okay. So, this is near the rotor blade tip the gas does not follow the intended path. So, this is happening at the rotor blade tip where the um, fluid gas or the fluid does not follow the desired path. So, what it does it reduces work output and increases or rather interact interacts with the outer wall boundary layer. So, these losses are a, a estimated I mean how do I mean how do you estimate these things I mean that is an obvious things. But typically, if you conduct the test in a test rig, so you can estimate these losses or uh, you can carry out the detailed computational study and also can estimate these losses. Now, then it comes the another important thing which is the turbine performance. So, this we have extensively discussed while talking about the compressor. So, similarly for turbine there could be an performance curve and one can again estimate these things like uh, using those uh, simple non-dimensional analysis of Buckingham pi theorem. So, Now, the eta t this one can obtain from the cycle calculations or measured let us say 3 is the turbine inlet and 4 is turbine outlet. So, this is the turbine efficiency. So, what you have again these are the P naught 3 by P naught 4 the pressure ratio they are function of some non dimensional group which are instead of going into the details that we have already done that for the compressor rather in a extensive fashion. So, I will just quickly go through these things. So, one is M dot r t naught 3 divided by p naught 3 d square. So, that is one non dimensional group second is omega d gamma r t naught 3 and then gamma omega d square by nu. Okay, so, this is nu and this now, Reynolds number which is essentially this omega d square by nu is not an important variable and also at the same way the nu. So, it we can drop those term and because we have already discussed about the justification at the high turbulent condition they are pretty much independent. So, this boils down to m dot r 
T naught 3 divided by P naught 3 d square and omega d by gamma r T naught 3. So, there is a only two non dimensional group and so these like uh, this is the sort of non dimensional mass flow rate and this is the non dimensional speed and uh, we can look at the variation for example, eta t with the change in pressure ratio. So, that some sort of an like it goes like this. So, these are 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8 something like that and that is our n over root 3. So, that means change in the rotational speed and then how the pressure ratio changes, it changes the turbine efficiency. So, what one can see here is that eta t is almost constant over a wide range of operating conditions. So, I mean if you look at this portion of the curve, so they are pretty much remain constant. So, since the flow is accelerating, hence the loss coefficient is also low because that already we have uh, discussed because the turbine the things are expanding. So, when the flow is expanding, it is actually extracting the energy out and the speed also increases. So, this is where the flow is always accelerating. Uh, now, the other component is mass flow rate m dot root t naught 3 by p naught 3. So, this is again the curve goes uh, like uh, some sort of an So, this is let us say 0 0.4, 6, 1, again these are the non dimensional uh, speed and this is the zone where you can see there is hardly any change in the mass flow rate, this is called turbine choking. So, that means m dot reaches the maximum condition. Okay. So, that is what it calls the choking. Okay. So, this can occur in nozzle and all this. Now, the other aspect of it because these blades are exposed to the high thermal gradient or rather the hot gases are coming out of this blade. So, turbine blade cooling is another important aspect. So, why the cooling is required? Because you want to increase the uh, limit of turbine inlet temperature and also you can increase uh, specific power output or the increase the specific power output and reduces TSFC. So, there are broadly two ways of cooling. So, the methods are broadly classified into two larger one. One is the air cooling system, other case is the liquid cooling system. Now, again the air cooling system, this is where you can have external cooling or you could have internal cooling. 
and one of the example of the external cooling is the flame cooling system, flame cooling approach which is um, basically the air is injected this is just like an synthetic jet there are multiple holes which are done through which the air is injected out. Just if you somebody look at the blades like this and these are the holes from which the air comes out and that is actually cools the blade surface. Now, liquid cooling this is not used in aircraft application that is one thing okay. because the channeling the liquid into the blade is an bottleneck there could be corrosion then there could be formation of deposits. So, that is why this is not a very preferred method for aircraft application and here also you can have external you could have internal this could have spray cooling this could be forced convection free convection. So, now with the cooling one important thing is the operating temperature can be increased even by around 400 Kelvin. So, that is a change one can op obtain this uh, cooling method. Now, another way to look at this uh, since the air, air cooling is a preferred method in uh, aircraft application. So, instead of broadly categorized in external or internal cooling one can also look at like convection cooling or you can do impeachment cooling. film cooling, full coverage, film cooling or you can have transpiration cooling. So, convection cooling is typically how it looks like is that you have a blade or passage like this and you have made such groups like this and this through which the passages the cooling air goes through it typically done. Now, in the impingement cooling you have a layer like this and then you do some sort of an the bottom the impingement and flame cooling it is already you have a slab like this and through where there would be hole through which the cooling air comes through and full coverage film there actually you have these passages top of that these holes. So, through which it comes. So, this is what you get in the full coverage and transpiration the that is the way you do. So, these are the different cooling strategies that one can adapt. So, the important thing here is that when you talk about the turbine, turbine I mean apart from all these losses uh, uh, the important part is that blade cooling parameters because that can improve the efficiency. And since the turbine blades are um, uh, exposed to the high temperature, so cooling is very very essential. So, that the life of those blades are increased and at the same time you can improve the efficiency of your whole engine. So, this is what uh, we can uh, talk about uh, axial turbine and we will stop the discussion here and continue the rest of the discussion in the next lecture.